Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. We're gonna have a great show today and I'm glad you joined us. My guest is gonna be Dr. Matt Meisner and today we're gonna to talk about what a water belly is in cattle or in steers and, and how we can treat it, how we can prevent it, different things you need to look for. I'm glad you joined us, it's gonna be a great show. Got more hats, see you after the message. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine. Your stem cells, your health, your life. Hey there, welcome to Doc Talk. Dr. Meisner, welcome back. Glad to be here, as always. And folks, this is a friend and colleague, Dr. Matt Meisner. He is great, and it's just awesome to have him here on the show. He's associate clinical professor here at the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine. And today we're going to talk about water bellies and or, or plugged up steers, goats, whatever, but something that you've had quite a bit of experience with. A lot of it, yeah. I mean, it's common in you know, just about any species that we work with. You know, I've had to deal with it from cats and dogs early on in my career, from white-tailed deer to bulls here later on with just the large animal stuff. So we, about anything. You people. People. And I haven't had to do one. <laughs> no, me neither. And thank goodness. I have had an intern that was passing a stone once. And she looked really painful. So. It does not look, it <laughs> does not look like it's uh, I don't want to go there. All right. yeah. so, so. so tell me, just kind of walk me through what, what is causing this? What's, what's the, what, what do we see in these animals? You know, I think the absolute most common reason that they would be a water belly or essentially the technical term would be a, a urethral obstruction or a urinary obstruction and the most common reason is uh, a stone or a calculi that forms in the urinary tract makes a concretion it gets so far and then just shuts down and so then um, unable to urinate it starts backing up and so that's the most common I have seen injuries do it um, some worry about prepucial or penile injuries in bulls um, allowing, preventing them from urinating, which could back them up. However, I've not seen that yet. That's that's a different thing. So injuries, but by far and away, the most common reason would be uh, a stone. Well, I think a lot of people don't understand. There's a solid fraction to urine. Right. And and you know you can freeze dry urine and wind up with a solid fraction with with calcium and and oxalate and and nitrogen uh, urea nitrogen type mm -hmm. compounds and these things. Then I guess just start to form into a ball and and then we get a plug. They do, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we've seen uh, on an ultrasound, you can see these little refractile things and, you know, uh, in the urine. And so, yeah, you have you have solids in that that uh, eventually can uh, congeal. <laughs> when you go to some of those uh, truck stops um, and you, you you look at in the bathroom there, you you learn pretty quick that scaling in some of the things there's there is a solid fraction to to, to, to this to this problem. Yep. But um, so you know when we when we start to to think about these animals and and the way they present, obviously they're, they're going to start out in some pain. I would assume. Sure. Um, ruminants in general, you know, they'll they'll mask it pretty good, but um, straining um, usually sometimes they're just off by themselves and not feeling well, and then it, it progresses from there, but. Um, you see them, you know, sort of a humped back. Um, and one thing that I like to say is that ruminants especially are uh, recreational urinators and defecators. And <laughs> one of my mentors told me that. And so there should always be a moist prepuce or should always be urine coming, whether that's a goat or a steer, you know. So um, you see that, you know, we start looking for those and see if they're dry. Gotcha. Well, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll start talking a little bit more about some of the specifics with urinary calculi or, or, or water bellies, different ways they can present, different things that you can see. Dr. Dan with Dr. Matt Meisner, more after these messages. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet, 
healthy cows start with the new Hired Hand Automatic Livestock Sprayer. Rancher invented to provide an efficient alternative to pour on and injectable parasite management systems. The portable design allows cattle to treat themselves head to hoof. Strategic device placement with pass-through activation technology takes the stress out of parasite treatment for cattle and the rancher, leaving more time to tend to other vital tasks on the farm. To learn more, visit cowsprayer.com. The new hired hand makes healthy cows easy. Ag Promo Source is a unique group of marketing specialists with one mission, help your ag business grow. Each affiliate has their own area of expertise and they work together to bring you advice, products, and services. To get started, visit agpromosource.com. Ag Promo Source, together we grow. This segment brought to you by Santa Fe Trail Meats in Overbrook. Visit us online at sftmeats.com. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Matt Meisner, who's an associate clinical professor and leads the section of livestock practices here at Kansas State University's Veterinary Health Center. We're talking about water bellies, urinary calculi, these, these cattle plugging up. But can you kind of walk us through, you know, some of the differences in, in what we're going to see with some of the anatomical differences and why this happens? Yeah, so... Um Interesting, you know, we can see stones in anywhere from the kidney to the to the outside. The most common places are places where that would narrow for these stones to stop. You know, so we've seen ruptures in the ureter, we've seen bladders that pop. But in cattle, there's a narrowing right about um, we call it the sigmoid portion of the penis, and it's it's a narrow area. There's some muscles that attach there, and it'll get about that far, and then it tends to be a narrow spot and it stops. Okay. It's a small ruminants. Um, they also have a, an extra little appendage that comes off the end of their penis, and they'll, they'll plug there. Cattle don't have that. Um, however, they'll, they'll oftentimes plug right about where we call that S-curve portion of the penis, and uh, that's just a narrowed area. And, uh, well, and, and so when they, they do, then do we see different clinical signs or different presentations based on where the, the plug occurs? It can. Um, so we, one of the first physical things we mentioned, first it should be moist if we have a dry prepuce or sheath. The next thing I do is I come up and I can palpate that area, which is generally right above where the scrotum would have been or where it is in a bull. And you can feel that area and they're oftentimes painful. Uh -huh. you know, sometimes there's some swelling and some leakage there. Um, occasionally that will rupture there. And then you'll have urine that um, accumulates underneath the skin all the way down the sheath. So we'll see that. But sometimes it actually ruptures in the bladder, and they start getting a full uh, abdomen full of urine. You know, so they're still painful. They're still not urinating. They're still usually off feed and not feeling feeling very very well. Um, but that pain right around that sigmoid area sometimes gives us a good idea. Okay, now, you know, I've I've seen different presentations of the water belly, and sometimes they'll be, you know, the the urethra will be filled up. You can get the urine in the in the belly, in the sloshing sound. Uh, sometimes we, we don't see anything externally. We just see that animal that's not doing well, tail raised, and they're straining. You know, what are some of the differences? I think there's some confusion as to what a water belly is and what, what, what we're seeing. Sure, and, and, and I think that producers or others that have seen water bellies and they've seen the one where they rupture and all the urine just accumulates underneath the skin and around the sheath. Yep. Um, you know, it's, it's visual, you can see it, versus another one that's bladder popped and it's now leaking urine into the abdomen. It doesn't get underneath the skin. And so that can just be a full abdomen full of urine. And ruminants are unbelievable about recycling all this urea and this toxin. You know, so it may just be an ADR not feeling well. You know, they urinated, popped into their bladder and they felt really good, you know. And, um, but about 36, 48 hours later, they're starting to get that built back up and uh, they start feeling pretty sick. So it's, it's easy to miss them. You know, it can be a short period before, that, before the urine releases. Yeah, and I've seen them not feeling good and all of a sudden that bladder ruptures and then they, they feel relieved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and whether they rupture in the urethra or anywhere in that tract, if it's going in the abdomen, we may not see. May not see it. All right, no. well, we're gonna take a break. When we come back, we're gonna talk a little bit about how we treat these animals and how we can prevent them. You're watching Doc Talk, Dr. Dan here with Dr. Matt Meisner. More after these messages.
Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego is driven by the spirit of American ingenuity. Come in for a new Chevrolet car, truck, or SUV. If we don't have exactly what you want, we'll find it for you. And we also have a great selection of used cars. We make sure you have an easy, fun, and transparent sales experience that saves you time and money. But if you want high-pressure salesmen and hours spent in the finance office, you'll just have to go elsewhere. Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego. We're making car buying great again. This is Eric Stone Street, and as many of you know, I love my home state of Kansas. In March, Kansas ranchers lost homes, equipment, and thousands of cattle from the largest wildfires in the state's history. Imagine losing all you have in a fire. Not just your house, but your livelihood. Ranchers are beginning to rebuild, but it will take years and tens of millions of dollars to build back herds, fences, and other infrastructure. Today, I'm asking you to help. Donate what you can and show your support to the ranchers of Kansas. Simply go to kansasfires.com. Your donation is tax deductible and will go to those who need it the most. We do business with Blueville because of the quality of their work it is excellent quality and because they make a commitment to their customers. We enjoy the benefits of hiring a good company to help us maintain this home. We will always do business with Blueville. We have for many, many years and there's no reason for us to look for any other service. This segment brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. Progress powered by Kansas farmers. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Matt Meisner. We're at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine where Dr. Meisner is the section head for livestock practices here at the Veterinary Health Center. And I, I just wanted to mention too, we got two more hats in. Thanks for sending them. We got one here from Cactus Feeders down in Amarillo, Texas, and then one from Vinmar Angus, which is Gordon, Nebraska. And actually, that's my cousin uh, Vince uh, Bickle, and his wife Mary, and and uh, Ryan and Bryson. And so, thanks for sending the hats. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we keep it rolling. But um, Dr. Matt, when when we're talking about water bellies, so we've got them plugged up, and and now I bring one in. What what are some things you're going to do or assess, and and then do to treat these types of animals? Well, one unique thing in 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 ruminants, whether it be sheep, goats, llamas, alpacas, pigs, um, or cattle, um, you know, others we might we just got to try to open it back up, right? So we just got to get urine flowing again. Um, it's easy easier said than done, and that. Ruminants, uh, they have this sort of blind pouch. You think, well, let's just pass a catheter up there and break it free and loosen it up and get it into the bladder and give us get it free. Um, there's a little blind pouch up there that doesn't allow us to do that very easily. Um, you have to require some special work. But you've got to get the urine out. And so in steers, by far and away, oftentimes we're just going to reroute them um, where we redirect the do a surgery where we redirect the penis out the back end or open the urethra to the back end. Some will be able to dissect down and find the stone and break it. You know, whatever we got to do, we got to get rid of that, get rid of that obstruction, and it, either that's a redirection or whatnot. In the small ruminants, we'll sit them up on their back and we'll look at that little appendage, and sometimes there's a, a stone in that. You know, but um, in cattle, we just got to get it free um, and open it back up. You know, if, if the bladder's ruptured. Oftentimes, if we can get it to urinate normally, that bladder can heal on its own. Yeah, and I, I used to, you know, the the cells of the bladder are, are like, you know, leaves, leaves, and and that thing when it opens up, the bladder ruptures, it can actually go back yeah. together and, and heal pretty well if we can get that moving. And yeah. like you said, those those cattle are pretty impressive in how long they can withstand having urine leak from the bladder into the abdomen. Sure abdominal yeah. cavity right yeah and we we're just kind of talking during the break that there's some research out there so they can go a couple of weeks with that you know and not get sick pretty tough but um you know and and that that's not an option really in a bull you know so we do have to redirect it another way and we do these surgeries where we we put a tube in their bladder allow that to drain to the outside while we're trying to let the urethra heal you know so we don't really want to cut that if we've got a bull that needs to 
uh, breed later on or or a buck or a ram and, and so you all see breed. bulls all the time yeah i mean and and pretty consistently in here in your service uh you know what what are some of the things i guess we, we got a minute here before we go to break but maybe some of the things that people that are wondering about you know working with their veterinarian to send a bull down to you um you know what what are some of the things that y'all are doing here right i mean we we work them up um, from the get-go and, and we get a good history and discussion with your veterinarian over the phone um, I talk to them on the phone you and we all kind of make a plan together and we start from square one say where do we want to go what our values what's our options on this and and we can we can do some specialized surgeries um, as far as these tube cystostomies and just getting uh, dissecting down to your urethra and trying to find the stone and getting it out um, you know, um, trying to trying to do some of those, but we usually work from square one with your clients, the client and their veterinarian together, and try to everybody come up with a plan that meets every all of our goals at once. You know, so we don't always do the specialized things; we can redirect them just as as well. You know, so um, we modify it for each and everybody. Awesome. Well, folks, if I had a bull that needed surgery or was lame, and and my local veterinarian didn't have the equipment. Uh, you know, this is really a place where you can send animals. Dr. Meisner's one of the world's best, and, and anything I had with one of my animals, this would be the person I'd be sending them to. Folks, we're going to take a break. When we come back, more with Dr. Matt Meisner here from the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University. No matter where, no matter why, the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University is committed to providing quality patient care to animals and exceptional customer service to their owners. From routine checkups to emergency and specialty care, our world-renowned specialists and experienced professionals are here to discover, to teach, and to heal. Let us know. How can I help? How can we help? Hey folks, Dr. Dan from Doc Talk here. Be sure to join me for Drover's Cowboy College, June 20th and 21st in Springfield, Missouri. We're gonna have experts covering topics such as cow nutrition, treatment options, low stress cattle handling, genetic selection, and economics on keeping your cow profitable. Be sure to register, go to www.droverscowboycollege.com or give us a call at 877-482-7203 and I'll see you in Springfield. Soil is the life of a farm, and for 25 years, SureCrop Liquid Crop Nutrition has helped growers produce abundant quality crops while preserving and improving the soils they steward. SureCrop offers complete soil and plant analysis with cropping recommendations, delivery direct to your on-farm storage, and quality crop nutrition custom blended for your field. Choose SureCrop for the assurance of excellence for your soil. Call today or visit their website for more information. Did you know long-range planning through the checkoff can help keep your business profitable? To successfully pass on cattle operations from one generation to the next, it's important to promote beef and keep farms and ranches profitable. Your beef checkoff helps do that. My family owns and operates Empire Dairy here in Wiggins, Colorado. Uh, my father-in-law, Jack Denise, he came here from Portugal and he has a, a long history of milking cows in his family. And they started milking in the United States in 1989. My husband, Norm, and my brother-in-law, Bill, a partner in the dairy. I mean, you don't normally think about maybe the beef checkoff when you're a dairy producer, but uh, there's certainly a lot that the checkoff does for, for dairy producers. We're about 20% of the beef supply. So Beef Quality Assurance has helped dairy producers by giving us some new tools and some new perspectives about things that we do on the dairy and how that translates into a beef carcass at the end of their life cycle. So some things that we talk about are injection site, uh, loading and handling procedures to minimize bruising and to keep, we wanna keep that animal in the best condition possible, not only for the health and welfare of the cow, but at the end of its production cycle, we wanna produce a, a quality product that we can enter into the beef supply. At the end of the day, the more successful operation you can have, the better chance you give your kids to be able to, to carry on and, and uh, continue in this industry. Norm and I have three kids that we hope someday will want to come back 
and take care of these cows and take care of this land. As fourth generation farmers themselves, Heinen Brothers Ag Service understands the risk and rewards of farming. So when it comes to quality aerial and ground application, fertilizer, ag chemicals, and anhydrous ammonia, call Heinen Brothers Ag today, 800-760-4964. I was in an accident where I fell off a roof. I don't know why I started to research stem cells, but I did. And I visited with the doctors. They were excellent. I had my neck done, my shoulders done, section of my back, my hips, my sacrum, my sciatica, and my tailbone. Now I am having better range of motion in my arms and my neck and my back. It was a long road to get there, but I'm so glad that I found them. This segment brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook or Twitter. Hey folks, Dr. Dan from Doc Talk here. Thanks for joining us. I'm here with Dr. Matt Meisner. He's a colleague here at Kansas State University where he leads our livestock practices section and sees a ton of cases and in a referral setting at our veterinary health center at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine. And while we talked about the clinical signs, we've talked about the treatments, surgeries and, and other options, really prevention is, is something we, have, we need to focus on. Yeah, and we said it's stones almost always, and it's almost, it, it's dietary, you know, so they form these and those minerals or solids just get out of balance, and that's what forms a stone, and, and we know high-risk diets, we know what tends to increase the chances of a stone forming and yeah. you can look at those you can you can predict when they're going to be a problem um, and you, you kind of look back at it as far as a preventive and and sometimes you know um, we put bits into a into a ration that kind of limits some of the pH that will change some of those electrolytes that get exteriorized and but you know um, there's just going to be a certain number that are just going to tend to form stones, you know. So when we see a higher number than we expect, then we start really worrying about or looking into the diet. But um, sometimes it's just uh, an individual or two. And just like people, you might have one person in your family tree that's had a stone. And we see a certain number of other species where there's a really small percentage that just make stones. They just That's just the way that they metabolize things. Yep. And I always say, you know, if you're using those 12, 12, 12 mineral blocks, 12% calcium, 12% phosphorus, 12% salt, you get that calcium to phosphorus ratio out of whack. You need to have it at least one to one or two to one in that calcium to phosphorus ratio. Uh, you can go all the way up to seven to one, but no more than that. But, but at least one to one, two to one calcium to phosphorus to prevent stones. Some of the grazing things with the silicates and, and, and things, there's, you know, it really, there's not a big way to prevent those, but just some, just understand making sure that you have adequate water supply uh, yeah. for uh, those animals is really important. Sure. Dilution and, and swings in weather. Yeah, so we do see spikes, it seems like, at certain times of the year where, where water consumption might be down or, or up or change in balances like that. And so absolutely um, keeping it down. Um, some of these feeds for small ruminants, they do have some additives to help acidify the urine if it's the type of stone that forms in alkaline urine. Um, but not all stones, stones form in that same pH. You're right. We didn't yeah. talk about, I mean, heck, there's half a dozen different types of stones that can form and, uh, and they're all a little bit unique in how they make it. And I think it's important that if you, if you start to have an outbreak, make sure you get with your veterinarian right off the bat Get a diagnosis, get the because it's important to find out what kind of stone it is because you can't really treat or prevent without getting that diagnosis to to make sure. Sure, yeah, there are some that um, really don't form in, in necessarily grain diets, and maybe that's just an individual that has a, a different type of metabolism. Yep. So, well, thanks for being on the show. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Well, we love having you here, folks. Thanks for joining us today on Doc Talk. Remember, always work with your local veterinarian. If you want to know more about what we do here on Doc Talk, you can find us at www.doctalktv. Always work with your local veterinarian. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson, and I'll see you down the road. Closed captioning brought to you by Egg Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at eggpromosource.com.